Just Made Media presents One on One, a video podcast featuring exclusive interviews and live performances in our multimedia studio located in downtown Chicago. All right, all right. Yo, another episode of One on One. Uh, yo, let me just send my shout outs real quick before we introduce our guest for today. A uh, big shout out to our co-host, Gigi, uh, DJ Uncle L. We got uh, my man Chase Kalor on the boards. We got uh, other uh, JMM crew member Michelle in the house. And a uh, big shout to uh, my man right here, his wife Monique, Unique, Unique Monique, <laughs> uh, Marcos, and Kristen. Everybody yes, in the yes, house. Sir, yes, sir. And without further ado... Pleasure to introduce my man right here, B4 Lasers. Yeah. Oh, appreciate you. Thank yo, you for yo. having me, man. Thank you. Absolutely, man. Uh, yo, another gentleman that we've uh, been seeing here on the uh, beat scene here in Chicago. And this guy is doing it hard, man. Everywhere he goes, his name precedes him. People are always like, yo, you got to hear this guy. And, um, Went out to the last open beats and, you know, he was throwing down for real, for real. We've seen him at the Miyagi Records. And, you know, as we always do, we're going to just, every time we see a talented producer, you know, doing this thing, we like to get the backstory on who the artist really is and what makes them the artist. And we always represent hip hop culture. You know what I'm saying? Word. So, um, yeah, let's, um, we like to always take it back to the beginning. And, you know, if you want to share for us a little bit about your upbringing and how you got into hip hop culture. Yeah, shoot. Well, I'm from Kenosha, Wisconsin, you know, simple town. Um, from there, you know, I spent a lot of time with my uncle growing up and in the church growing up. So doing that, I was always around music, man. I was always banging on trash cans. My mom used to yell at me for making noise and just uh, trying to have rhythm. I guess I've always been with the rhythm and with the sauce, you know. So uh spent a lot of time with my uncle, like I was saying. I um, He played oldies like all the time, always and forever was probably one of his favorite joints by Heat Wave. And, um, you know, doing that, it really inspired me to be into oldies, be into music, you know, early on, early young. Um, then I heard Kanye and it was a rap. No yeah. doubt, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Chicago area I find is always real good with the uh, digging for the soul samples and everything. Yeah, yeah, totally. Words. So, you know, upholding that tradition in Sometimes I think with the soul samples, you think like most of them have been sampled already, but yeah. you know, there's always ways to find new things to do with them. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Even the mixture of genres, I think that's another thing that um like soul jazz, man. A lot of people like f- forget that it's not just, you know, not just soul, you know, that changes a lot for real, for real. So So at what point did you start getting geared? Like when did you first start thinking? Okay, I, I gotta like make this move and begin to really invest into what you know being a beat maker. I think so. I met my um, I met my cousin, uh, see, uh, brother can do. Almost called him his old name, Seymour Samples. He would have killed me for that. Mm-hmm. But um, going to his lab for the first time was when I saw like just a, a I call it a labyrinth, man, of just like samplers and vinyl as far as you could see. Um, and that's when I knew right then and there, like, oh, all right, Fruity Loops is cool. This is cool, but I need, I want gear. I want to really like bang on pads and really get creative. And I feel like this is before like all of that stuff really was hitting the market anyway with control surfaces and on and on and on. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a little, kind of early with that. So, um, that's when I started, man. I, I, I was hunting online. Um, I think I was like 17. Um, I was hunting online for, uh, for an MPC. 2000. Okay. And that yeah, was yeah. that was my and I and I ended up finding it on eBay. Thank God, yo. It wasn't it wasn't dusty cuz boy, we all know about that eBay struggle, don't we? Um, yeah. So I yeah, I got that and then um the other machine that I got was a uh Emu ESI uh 2000. Okay. Which was a uh which is a rack mount sampler. A lot of people go with the 950, you know, um and other samplers along that that lane, but I really love the way the uh the SP twelve hundred sounded, so this was a way to get the grain of that from a rack mount sampler. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like it gets overlooked. So, 
So what what would you use to control the rack mount? Like the MP. Oh, okay, I, I got yeah, you. Yeah, the MP into the into the rack mount. Then I just recorded everything in Ableton. Use MIDI cables. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, cassettes man. for days. I mean, the cassettes. I'm tripping. <laughs> Floppies for days, man. Yeah. No doubt, no doubt. Yeah. This you're the first guest that we've had that's gone into that side of um, you know, talking about different production gear. You know, what yeah, I'm saying? totally. Because uh, uh, most guys are either probably working inside the door, mm-hmm. or maybe they have like an SP. Like I know you rock live. Yeah. But really dealing with like. Hooking up different mini machines together and, and getting oh, the yeah, control totally. stuff, yeah, totally, yeah, yeah. So that was that's been a treat right now. So is Emu the same company that makes the ASR? Or no, I believe would, I believe so. I believe the ASR is a is it or is it Isonic? That's I, it. I, yeah, I, that might be Isonic. I, I, I get those guys confused sometimes. Or Insonic. I think it's like I think there's an N in there, and then but the Emu is the same company that makes the SP twelve hundred though. That's, ah, that's okay. So you know, yeah, all those classics, man. Word, word. So that's with that. Yeah, I think um, I think we we have Billy the Kid on. I don't know if you remember him, but yeah, we had touched a legend, a, a, BTK. A, no doubt, no doubt. We touched uh, on a, a little bit of some of the old samplers, yeah, and just how little people had to you, you know, like yeah, a few seconds, just a few seconds of samples. Exactly. You know, we didn't have the luxury of having all that like space to sample. Oh man, Akai S twenty was my shit. Okay. Oh, I don't know if I can cuss. I'm sorry. No, yeah, I yeah. Apologize. No, this is free format. Do you think? Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, the Kai S20 was, man, my cousin let me borrow it. I'll never forget you. Let me borrow it. Same one. Brother can do. Let me borrow it for like, I think I had it for maybe like a month. Man, it was crunchy. Drums were crazy, but you only had like a, you know, not, not. I think it was like 10 seconds or 15 mm-hmm. seconds or something. Yeah. You know, it had no sequencer. So everything you did had to be like, like live, like. So if you pitch it down, you play it back, you play it back live. Like you have to you couldn't control it within itself with the sampler. I mean with the sequencer. So um it was crazy, like with the yeah, the limited amount of time. But that's was the fun of it, you know? Now the S twenty, maybe you could school me, cause um is that from around the same area as like the MPC sixty? Or I'm, Man, I wish I knew the I wish I knew the like the day I would say so though. But the S twenty is a is a, a rack now also? Nah, it's like it's like a desktop, like it looks like um man, it looks like an MPC kinda, but it's got it's a lot smaller in format. Okay. And it has plastic buttons and not like those pads. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um it reminds you it it feels like a uh it feels like a SP. You see it, right? Yeah, it it feels like an SP with the clicky like buttons, but it was crazy. It had this gritty sound that I just I, I loved it, man. I used to love having the thing. Then he took it back. <laughs> Broke my heart. He said, I need that. I said, oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's nice, yeah. though, man. I mean, even, you know, I caught a little bit of the era. You know, like, I started making beats maybe in, like, 98 or something, 99. Mm-hmm. And dolls weren't really out or they were a fortune, you know? Oh, yeah. So, totally. um, but uh, I used the Windows Media Player on, like, a Windows 96 computer. And mm-hmm. I somehow figured out a way to, like, blend samples. Oh, that's and, and I made beats on it. And I couldn't afford beat machines. I had a little uh, boss, like yeah. a, like you know what I'm saying, uh, mm-hmm. Doctor Rhythms or whatever. Yeah. So I grabbed drums and bass off of those. Hey, those were drums. those were tight, low key, man. Like yeah. street you box. Can't, you can't front on that. Nah. The drums was come yeah, on, drums were crazy, man. <laughs> and just for the fact that you could make bass in it and, as well, and you could yeah. like you could like loop and sequence in it. Like, Facts. Word, word. Was yeah. the, the street box was boss too, right? Was well, I never heard of street box? I had a a, a DR5 and a, a DR660. Uh, uh, Dr. Rhythm joint. Got yeah. you, got you. Or, you know, yeah, I, I might have the name wrong, but you know, it's the one that's black and orange, like you see them everywhere. Yeah, oh, yeah. And little jog wheel on them. Mm-hmm. Word. But, um, yeah, you know what I mean? So I kind of felt like I was like a part of a collection of people that were ready to all be software, you know, mm-hmm. and didn't mm-hmm. have as much hands on. But, um, you know, running things analog, it forces you to also get an analog sound out of them, you know? And, yeah, uh, you can saturate. That's right. Know, like naturally. Where, yeah. where? All right, so yeah. you know, let's segue into that then. Yeah, good. Um, what are you using nowadays to make your beats? Like, you know, what's your process? Man, SP twelve hundred. I'm twelve hundred. I must be out of my SP four hundred four Mark two. Just, just that. Word. Um, I pretty much will sample vinyl, or um, if I do use Ableton Live, Ableton Live is for um playing keys, like uh, create my own samples. Like not that long ago, a few months back. We did a shout out Duck World. We did the Duck World uh, sample pack where we all created compositions um, for it. 
and, and to give to it for the community and, you know, using, like I said, Ableton Live, a few different tricks of the trade because I, I don't know how to read music or write music, but mm-hmm. um, using Quarter Mist and other, other different plugins, I'm able to, you know, write my progressions out and then you can play them back with like a um, with like a launch pad or you can hook your SP up to the DAW and it will actually be a MIDI controller. Um, I believe only 16 pads though. I don't think the banks actually like transition over mm-hmm. on the SP. But yeah, that's how everything's, yeah, SP basement, vinyl basement. I'm constantly digging, you know. Um, y'all see me out here now getting the collection up, so. Word. Yeah. All right, all right. So yeah, you know, we, we jumped ahead a little bit to the modern era. So let's go back a little bit. Yeah, um, what years were you starting to really kind of like make your rounds? Was it, were you working with artists first or were you went right to performing? Uh, well, I used to rap, so I was making beats for myself, and um, you know, I, I started with meeting a lot of cats around Kenosha. Man, there was a lot of, there was a lot of hip hop, and still is a lot of hip hop and great music coming out of the scene. And I was making beats for myself for them. Um, there's various groups that I've been collectives I've been a part of over the years since high school, mm-hmm. like just just helping out. Um, just yeah, man, producing. It's been focused, man. Most even when we was using FL Studio, and we didn't have like before. I was you know seventeen, eighteen before that. You know, I started in '06, so you know it, it all started out just in the doll. You know, just trying to do whatever you can do. Word, word, dope, dope. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I know you mentioned, um, yeah, we had looked on your page a little bit. So you yes. got this crew that you rocking with now, right? The uh, yes, Duckworth, is that what they call? Duckworld, Duckworld 808. My bad, yeah, Duckworld 808. Good. Yeah, no, love, love, respect, no. you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, so tell us a little bit about the crew and, and what y'all been up to, how the crew have formed. Man, so Duckworld started out um, as a sample, like sample challenge community. Um, Duck Girl, um, based in, I believe she's based in like around or near LA. Um, she wanted to do these sample like she wanted to do these sample challenges like every week for herself because she had like just started making beats mm-hmm. with her and her um her man's Klopsy. and I heard about it from one of my good friends O Ricky because I was already starting to get into the community um of just trying to find producers. I remember I came across O Ricky page because he was making beats on the uh what's that thing the PO33 that's the pocket operator right mm. and he was like smoking joints on there and wow. i was like so eventually you know we got locked in for me probably bothering him with dm saying what up bro what up bro on b4 man how you doing <laughs> and um yeah so he he shared it on his page that we were doing these sample flip like challenges she was doing it and she wanted to add people and it became a chat or like an ig chat and um, it was like six of us, then it was 10 of us, then it was 40 of us, then it was 90 of us. Damn. Then Dibiase came and it was 150 of us. And it was like, <laughs> oh, like it was great. So, um, yeah, and it's just grown over time. And uh, since I've been around since the beginning, uh, I just was asked to be a moderator and kind of help out with the group, uh, help out with stuff that, that comes up or comes around um, and starting a chapter in Chicago. And then that's now we got Duck World Chicago where I'm doing, um, we're doing the same thing, sample flip challenges. It's all about building community for real, for real out here. That's that's what I wanted to do. I wanted Duck World to be somewhere where you as a beat maker, you as a sample digger, you as a beat maker, you as a singer, you as just a lover of hip hop, you can all come when there's shows. Like it, it's, it shows up there. It's not a barrel in a bucket or a mystery or it's hard to find. Right. Like I always felt like Chicago's so massive, it, you, you get lost in the sauce like super easy. So mm. yeah, I won't keep rambling. No, no, no. Okay, go ahead, Al. I was going to say like, shout out to Duck World for real. Um, Thank you. It, it, it really does feel like if, if that was the objective community, it's definitely yeah. got that vibe. Um, All day. When I tell people about like the chat, and that, like, oh, I want to add you to this community of beat makers. I always give them the, you know, the warning. It's gonna be a lot of messages. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> your phone's up. constantly <laughs> going ding, off. Ding, 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 ding. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> but it's all love. It's all good vibes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, like I said, I appreciate it. Uh, it's a lot of lot of sharing of wealth of information between you know like minded individuals. Fact. No doubt, no doubt. That's and, what it's about. So what years about uh, did the Duck World get together? This would have been. Uh, last last year, like really early last year. Nice. Like so it hasn't been around. Off. Yeah, 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 like not. Wait, no October. 
Um, October of 2022. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So not even early last year. I'm tri- It just Late hit me in my head because they want to do the one year reunion show in LA and they're just like, October before October. You got to be here. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> nah, it's ill. Like, that's one thing about the, um, pardon me, the uh, internet era that, um, you know, something with something clicks like that, how fast yeah. I can come together. You oh, know what yeah, I mean? Totally. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's love right there, no doubt. Um, so, words. So, are you still rhyming? Man, nah, man. I, I, let, <laughs> I let that go. But I did have a blast, though, man. We put in a lot of work, man. I made albums, man. And, you know, that was that was a blast. That was a hell of an era for sure. Word, word. I mean, you know, I only bring it up because I think that if you're a producer and you think you're going to work with MCs, you don't have to be like rapping all the time or nothing, but I think it actually helps when you know a little yeah. something about rhyming yourself. Mm-hmm. You, you, sometimes it just means that you help the MC bring the most out of them, you nice. know, yeah. and, um, and y'all really can join in one mind and um, mm-hmm. make the best record possible. You know what I'm saying? Totally, man. I think one of the biggest things that comes from like at least knowing how, you know, rap works and bars work, that's, that's one of the biggest, knowing how bars work. Because if you don't, like you'll just make beats that just go on forever. You know, and then you got to figure out how to format it mm-hmm. for someone. And then the second biggest thing is space. Mm-hmm. You learn that without space, there can't be like a song. You know what I mean? Like there's no pocket for that person to live in. Mm-hmm. So, okay. yeah, those two big things like really help. You know, if you know a little bit about rap or you rap yourself, or at least you dabble in it, you never got to release it, but at least try. You know what I'm saying? Word, word. And, uh, you know, like, you know, I came up a long time uh, DJing. And I would encourage DJs to produce sometimes just so they can get a feel of what the producer's thinking. And then I've encouraged producers to try DJing once in a while so you can see what your record sounds like in the room and see how it interacts with a you know a room full of people, you know what I mean? Yeah. But that's what I, you know, what I love about what's happening with this beat making scene that you're definitely a huge part of here in Chicago is that it merges the DJ set. With uh, with what it feels to be a producer, and now producers get a feel of like, yo, I'm gonna take all of my best work and see if I can work the room and work the crowd. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. I'm bringing it up because um, and you know I saw you as a feature performer. You know what I mean? Like everyone was rocking. You know, yeah, that's what my wife was saying. She was like, you should have seen it. She was like, everybody's head is just like a bobblehead. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, that's good. You know what I mean? And yeah. um. You know, uh, you're blessed to be able to do that. You know what I mean? Thank Cause, you uh, very much. Sometimes you'll see some people. You know, much love to everybody out there. But you know, it's it's more like background music. You know what I mean? They're not yeah. really working the crowd. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. that was nice. You know what I mean? I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Um, word, word. So yeah, you know, not to jump around too much, but it's all good. Uh, but let me ask you more of a philosophical question, just about how you feel about hip hop culture, you know, just what it means to you and, okay. and, and, and how your music, you know, relays the message right now to the world. So the question is how, how does the hip hop, what are you saying one more time? Yeah. Like how you feel like, like personally, like vested of like your vision of like what hip hop means to you. Maybe that's a better way to put it. Oh, I bet. Um, well, I mean, hip hop is the man, it's the world to me, man. When I was, when I went through things in my life and I was lost in my life, I was able to, you know, make music till I heard the birds chirping in the morning, you know, just cooking up beats, getting the kicks on the top of the ceiling from the apartment above me, you know, I'm just the doom, 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 doom. But yeah, um, that was my favorite. That's probably one of my favorite things is that it's, it's, it's just a segue to kind of like to take you away, you know, and, and free your mind from the troubles and stress. It's almost like a high, you know what I'm saying? But you don't have to literally be high for it, you know? Word, word. Yeah, thank you for the uh, for the jewel right there, man. Totally. We, we could always benefit. Hip-hop uh, as a culture is very important to me, you know? I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, you know, sometimes I know, like, like I'm from New York, and New Yorkers can sometimes be so, like, their attitude about hip-hop, but when you have a sense of how it started and how it really, like, saved people's lives... You know, Facts. and you have that respect for it, then mm-hmm. you you know you become passionate about it, and you don't like to just see it treated in the old way. You know what I mean? So uh, yeah. when I saw your vibe and I heard your beats, I was like, this guy's hip hop to the bone core. You know what I'm saying? Like, all day. and and I could just appreciate that. You know? Yeah. Word word. You that's know? My, that's man. You know, just hearing you say that, man, it just makes like it's it's funny. It like makes my whole like my whole like musical life like just flash. 
like in 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 front of my eyes. Like it's like I when you said that, I just saw like all the time I spent like at my cousin's crib in his lab or at my own crib or like you know spending my first fifty dollars to get all these crates of records that he gave me, bro. Like I never forget. And he didn't give me the totes either, man. Just as a side story, I'll never forget that, bro. Gave me like two hundred and fifty records, and I did not get the. The tote, man. I had to put it in the trunk of my car. It was terrible. <laughs> um, but it's just like all those times have made like this right here. Like it's made it all worth it. You know what I mean? Word, word. Yeah. So um, let's talk a little bit about uh, what you have on the horizon, you know, for 2023 and beyond. What are you looking at for your music right now? Shoot. Right now, I think a lot of it is just uh, just focusing on the community. For real, and and continuing to to build up that that vault, you know what I mean. If you don't got a vault, I recommend you start working on one. It's important because <laughs> it, it 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 frees the it frees the mind from stress of like, oh man, I'm not releasing the oh man, I'm not. You know that you ready, you know you ready when you want to be ready. So um, that's been my main thing. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff in the in the chamber, man. There's jazz albums. There's there's a, a lo, more lo-fi, like, uh, I want to say vapor wave, but like more like ambient lo-fi music. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of stuff like in the chamber, a lot of boom bap joints, man. Like, like so there's stuff coming for sure, though. There's stuff in the pipeline for sure. Word, word. All right, no doubt. So now with, for your set today, uh, yeah, yeah. You're pretty much rocking SP404, right? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Yeah, man. Well, listen, man. Do we have any comments from the uh, from the mm-hmm. crowd over here? Yeah, well, go I just, ahead. I just wanted uh, a little background on the name, like how you, yeah. how and what, why, uh, like you come up with B Four Lasers. Oh, totally, man. So I was sitting in my mom's crib in my bedroom. I just got all these records that I had to carry in the house. You know what I'm saying? And um, this was uh, honestly, this was around when I got back from job course. So I brought all these records in the house. Um, sitting with the MP, I got these records all over the floor in the room, and I'm like, my old name used to be Relic, cause I was like, oh, I'm a relic of the. I'm like, uh, nah, I don't like that anymore. <laughs> it seems kind of like old. And then I was like, what could my name be? I remember I had a Dell, uh, like Inspiron, like or some whatever that laptop was, um, big bulky joint. And um, I I popped the CD drive out and I saw the laser like, and I was like. B4 lasers. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Just like that. Yeah. <laughs> and I had, at the time, I had a uh, Technique S1200, like the original wheel of steel. I literally took my permanent marker and tagged it, and it was like, it's in stone. Took my slip mat, flipped I still got the slip mat on the wall in the studio, bro. Flipped it over, and I just tagged the shit out of it. Like, you know, this is what we're going to do, and this is what I'm running with. It's been that ever since, you know? Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a great question, man. Because actually, when I heard your name too, I was thinking like, it's a name that it sounds like it's in motion because it's before something, you know. So like, yeah. and it, and lasers to me represents like what they're doing with technology. You know, you're modern. like you're before the lasers. You know yeah. what I mean? Like the needle, baby. You know what I'm saying? That's the, the OG. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, it's it's hard to you know like to find a name that that. Has it's an action word unto itself, you know what I mean? So I never even, I, bro, I never even thought about it. I just was like, man, that's tight. <laughs> I yeah, just stuck yeah. with it, you know. But that's, I, I see what you mean there. That's, nah, that's yeah. interesting. You know, sometimes you just allow yourself to be, uh, uh, you know, like a vessel for the inspiration. Yeah, God, you know what just, I mean, it, can, bah, it just hits yeah, you. You know, Pac what I'm said it, man. He don't even write. You said, God, you know, hand on my brain. I just. You know, yeah, and yeah. it was like, yeah. So this is kind of like that with beats too, man. Sometimes I just, I just dig, bro. It'd be like head down, just even when I do the IG lives or like, I'm just dig. Even when I'm digging for, cause now I do all the sample challenges for Duck World. We used to like take turns, you know, Duck Girl to do it, and I'll do it, or Ricky to do it. It's like she was like, you know, you always picking. I love your your choices. Like, will you just do them? So I was like, yeah, for sure. It's like even when I'm like I'm digging for the for the community, I'm just like. Non, I'm not even existing. I'm just looking for the absolute heat, bro. You've and been then, you've been coming with it too. Like, thank you. And I feel like most people would find some gold like that and be like, I "All right, it. well, this is yeah, this is not for the group. This is just for me to flip." Uh, but like nah. you, you showing the love. Like you're that's, like, Yo, that's all we got to do. Do something with this, you know. And, and always and, amazing yeah. material. 
Yeah. And I feel like it's a good time to say as well, like, um, I want to make it more of a, more than, more public, you know what I mean? So that it's like your friends, your families can be a part of it. Like, I, I shared today, like, made a flyer, share so that people can go get it instead yeah, of just yeah. giving one sample. Like, now I'm giving you three or four. Right, like, I built the whole pack. Now we're giving drums. Like, I find drums, throw some drums in there, like, make it a pack. So, what you what you get, you're able to get and like really create with it and just mm -hmm. um and go even farther, man. Who knows where this? Uh, I see this going somewhere. I don't know where it's gonna go yet, but I feel like it's gonna be something that's gonna be even bigger. You know what I'm saying? So yes, yeah, so actually, we'll since we on the subject matter, real quick before yeah, we totally. get into the performance, let's get, get a little rundown on how the sample challenge works. So yeah, well, it's all about love, man. I feel like um. Once again, that's another reason why the Duck World, for sure, you know, the community that I tried to start in the city was about community and love. I feel like um, a lot of these challenges, a lot of things, it's always, um, it's always a battle. It's like a battle orientated, and I just, you know, that was never that was never Duck Girl's intention, and that was never like even my intention. I wanted it to be like to get you in the gym, cats be playing the same joints. I go to a show, I hear the same joints I heard last month. It's like, yo, you won new beats. It's like, nah, bro, I need more than that. You know, I, I want to keep people working. I want to keep people motivated. I want to keep people like growing. You know what I'm saying? And and that's what it's about. You know, that's that's like the the core of the, the sample challenge. So, anyways, <laughs> making you, it, making it. I'm sorry. I always wanted to I always wanted to say that in in, right. in light. So, all right. Anyways, so. You get the sample pack. Normally, it would be in the chat only. It was always like a, like a, not gatekeeped, but it was just a Duck World thing. You know, if you sure. join the chat, we write a little little note with the link to like YouTube or something for the sample, and then you could you rip the sample however you felt. Um, you flip it, you sample it, you make some dope joints out of it because that's what y'all do, and then um, usually people share it on IG, which was all kind of like the technique. And from there, you tag us, we share it. It'd be all love. And it got you in the gym and it kept you working. And we see you again next week and we do it again. Right. Some people get like beat blocked. They can't find raw samples. They feel like they can't find nothing. I feel that's a big thing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's what we're here for. There's something in everything. Right. And I feel like when someone hands you that gem, it's like, dang, I never even heard this. This is amazing. Right. I would love to flip that. Yo, go ahead. What is that? No, I said, right, right, right. Yeah. You know, so. Um, that's that. That was. That's kind of how it works, you know. Yeah, no uh, doubt. I mean, you know, like I think when people think, you know, 2010s or whatever, and, and uh, like Rhythm Roulette was coming out. Yeah, facts. You know, so that inspired a lot of people to get their version of a Rhythm Roulette going or whatever. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. kind of like to your point, like, but what you're doing is, like you said, it's a community. Yeah. So it's almost like sharing in the wealth, sharing in the resources, exactly. which is a little different of like. Prove it, you know, like yeah, that's <laughs> that was the that was the stance. But I understand that too, because you know, hip hop comes from a place where didn't nobody want you to do it. Right. They thought it was absurd. They thought it was too much. They thought it was too out there. Like, so no one wanted you. So every time that got passed on to the next person, to the next person, to the next person, it was like, oh, you rap, prove it, battle me. Oh, you do this, prove it, show me what you got. Where yeah. that's part of it and it should you should have that heart you know what i'm saying but at the same time you can't forget about the it takes a village you know what i'm saying you can't right. forget about that for every newbie that comes on for every old head that's out there you know we all got to work together and, and and build each other up you know what i'm saying so sharing the wealth and doing the music and the wealth and then the love is is where it's at for me anyway word word yeah. And also on the on the on the back end of it, once we are like sharing the you know beats we made and stuff, like it just gets like within the community, it's just people talking, and a lot of feedback, and, and you know, people like in their bedroom somewhere making beats, and you know, especially during the pandemic, you wasn't out playing out doing whatever. That's right. So you know, you can't just always make beats for yourself and and not hear you know. Some objective feedback. opinion or anything, right. you know what I'm saying? So, like, I definitely appreciate that. You know, the sharing part of the process is probably, like, the top of it for me. You know what hey, I'm saying? That's what, I'm. Mean, you know, I've, I've never even really, like, thought of it from that angle. I think this is why, you know, even we're getting more and more and more cats outside. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, um, and that, that also, you know, L makes a really good point, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. Really getting people to... Uh, not be so nervous 
with mm-hmm. what you got. This is what yeah, we yeah. do. We beat makers. We run this. No one else run this shit, man. That's right. You run this. I run yeah. this. We yeah. run this. <laughs> you know? Low key, I mean, in, in a beat driven, you know, in a world where pop music today is practically 98% beat driven, you know, there's less and less bands forming, you know, beat makers have to be able to stand up for themselves. And I wish we could all unite and just overthrow this music industry because to be honest, like none of this shit exists without the beat makers. Like exactly. none of it. Every trend that came out over the past 10 years was driven by the beats first. The lyricists, you know, God bless them. I'm a lyricist too, but a lot of lyricists are waiting for a great beat. You know what I mean? And what happened? Trap came along. The trap drums came first. Then the trap rappers came. You know, the you know the drill sound. I don't care what it is. Boom bap from from my era. Like this, the, you know, the culture started with the DJ. It started with the sound first. You know, the lyrics were sort of like, now I got somewhere to host. I got somewhere to be. I have a space to exist with. And you know what I mean? These guys are making so much money. You know, oh, it's exactly. like there's not enough of it being spread around. You know, so yeah. the beat maker community is kind of like. Nah, like we throw our own shows, we get our own venues, we have our own fame. None of it is dependent on like you forcing us to act like we need your handout. You know, that's you know what, what I I could think about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know what really inspired me with that too, like um just having that perspective and wanting to be like that musically, um, as a beat maker was like old the OG boiler room sets. It's like, bro, you got the homie in there with the SP going ape shit. Right. <laughs> like, yo, yeah. well, I want to do that. You know what I'm saying? We need, we need that back. We need that back. I gotta, we gotta make something with that. But, um, because now it's all DJ sets, sadly. Yeah. But anyways, uh, yeah. Well, listen, that's you know, I'm, let's segue right there. We're gonna get into your set right now. Let's do it. You know, we're not trying to jack. You know, the half, the half mentioned the podcast or whatever out there. We do our thing at one on one, but. You know what I mean? You know, we capture in the absence. You know what I mean? So, yes, yo, without further ado, yo, give it up one more time for my man before lasers. All right. All right. Love and appreciate you. So, all, my man, man Chase Calor, you could bring us to the commercial break. We gotta come right back with the set. All right. Let's do it. Shout out to K Morristar and most of the Marauder. We have a fire song that is called Not Another Migraine. Yeah, yeah. Migraine. We, we, we going between the names. We're gonna call it migraine. We're gonna call it migraine. Yeah, that's a I'm telling you, they definitely brought that out of me for sure, man. Work with those guys. Crazy. Rap on a metronome if they wanted to. I wish I could rap on a metronome. Nah, 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 nah. I just got the flow. Popping, you heard? If you don't do it, somebody else has to do it. So hurry up, hurry up, self. Hurry up, rise up, forward. What are you talking about? I don't
Bitch, you think it's small. We need to be thinking big. You need to be thinking big, bitch. You need to be thinking big, bitch. Think big, bitch. <laughs>
songs that uh, very few people have heard um, very much about, very much you know, what I've, uh, I've been going through. I've been going through. I've been
be obliged if you step outside Because my ride is awaiting I date it, a stake it, a nightcap We bait it, awaken My smells of perfume that I inhale And then tell how well we raise hell on the Giselle Satin sheets, heat from your feet Keep me warm, the mood is perfected With the sound from the storm You came stronger, I lasted longer Than I ever lasted, your vibe was fantastic The fuck that you passed it The way you made a nigga laugh I had to get you, and when I saw that ass What must I do? Yeah, if my life in danger too. Yeah, if that shit belongs to you. Yeah, if the way you act is true, who knows? Fine clothes, Lexus those will be closing when you become one of the chosen.
that shit back, fool. We're gonna do it like do this like for the next the hour. hour. All gospel. 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 So we're gonna take, we gonna you, take to you to church. So uh, here we go. We're gonna start off like this. Yo, people, once again, B4 Lasers right here. Yeah. Word, word, word. And uh, we definitely had a couple more comments before we got out of here, but I think we got a little surprise coming from the back room real quick. We uh, got to get into that. You know what I mean? Because we like dun, to show dun. love and we represent, you know, for all the beautiful things. Yo, yo, where we at? Drum roll, please. Dun, 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 dun. All right, all right. You know what, though? <laughs> Let me give them a moment, a moment here. <laughs> I think we got a little, you know, little time thing here. So, my bad. It's all good. It's all right good. Before we went into the set, yes, there sir. was a uh, little something else we was talking about. Uh, you had some records over there in Europe right now that's rocking. Is that what y'all yeah. talking about? Oh, yeah, man. Um, well, I just dropped a record that I mixed for, uh, for the artist's name is Mackie. Um, he just did a joint called, uh, I believe it's called Way Back Slash Bands. Uh, it's a two-piece record. Um, it's the same artist that uh, a few years back uh, we did uh, Cop Op and Thought featuring Drama Kid and uh, Jason Trill, which are some of the biggest artists um, in the Netherlands um, as far as hip hop is concerned. Uh, I got to mix and master that record. Yes, I'm a mixing and mastering engineer. I go by B4 Mixed It if you're ever looking for it. <laughs> Shout that. You know, you can slide and, and book me anytime. But, um, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, we go hard these ways. You know what I'm saying? If you're trying to have your record sounding right, I'm the guy. Word, word. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> From one mix engineer to another. Yes, I love to hear that because that's, that's its own passion, its own craft. Yes, it is. But here it is. Happy oh, birthday, B4. Oh. Happy birthday to you. 
Happy birthday before lasers. Oh, man. Happy birthday to you. I know we're about a week late, but woo. Yes, sir. Nice. Love. Thank you so much, man. I don't know what he wished for, but I wish for all the beat makers of the world to unite, you know? Yes, sir. So anyway. You already know. And uh, yeah, thanks again. Uh, big shout out to everybody in the house who came. You know what I mean? Uh, the whole crew. And that's another episode of One on One. All right? Yeah. <laughs> so and that's we all we do, baby. Great time tonight. If you peace. could uh, do me the favor and bring us an outro music. All right? Peace, peace. Peace and love, baby. Peace and love.